Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George Istid, the silent boat butler. This is a Contessa 32 here. Uh, I'm calling this series of videos Project Lottie. She's actually called Countess Charlotte, and she is a 32 that is with me for quite an extensive refit. In this episode, you're going to see me continuing with the inside works here. So I've got the water tank in now at the end of the last episode, and I've got my GRP, my glass fibre sheet, bonded in over the top of the water tank. And next, I'm going to be making up some floor bearers to go in the floor and glassing those in. I'm going to be making the step that goes at the front up by the mast and uh, templating and making the floor, or well, technically it's the subfloor because there's going to be a layer of teak and holly that goes over the top of that. Uh, then I've got to make new floor bearers for the step that's at the bottom of the companionway and build the, the step top and the step front for all of that as well. So if that's your sort of thing, then do keep watching and I hope you enjoy this video. In some of the earlier videos, you would have seen me carry out an osmosis repair. Now that osmosis repair was kind of being done whilst I was also recording the work that I was doing on the inside to do with rebuilding the uh, interior, putting the new water tank in and what have you. So you do see some references to that in the material. So I hope that's not too confusing. So uh, keep watching for more exciting Contessa rebuild videography. You might remember I cut some little holes in the glass fibre sheet that is over the top of the tank here because I need to make sure there's some drainage. So um, I've obviously glassed over those now, but you can just about see where I put some dimples in the uh, floor. So there's one here and one here, just usefully out of shot. So I'm going to go in with my little Dremel, which isn't a Dremel, it's a Bosch because um, I prefer them and uh, open those little holes up so I have drainage again. One of the things I've just been trying to work out is the levels for the floor because the next job in here is to get the floor bearers down and I'm using a laser level for that but of course for a laser level to work the boat has to be also fairly level so I had to do a little bit of tweaking on the cradle pads um, just tightening one side and loosening the other just to bring the boat upright because I've been working on the bottom cradle pads have been in and out quite a lot so um, I've just tweaked those, the boat is pretty level, it's slightly nose down at the moment, but that isn't going to affect um, getting things uh, lined up um, side to side. So I'll turn the camera around and show you what I've been doing. On the floor down here you can see that little piece of wood there is one of the old floor bearers that I may or may not reuse, but I've left it in there just to give me a level of the old floor. The other thing that gives me the level of the old floor is this bulkhead here, just here, uh, used to sit right on top of the old floor. And likewise, at the front, as much as I've had this piece of furniture out and back in again, where it stops just about here, uh, and I've extended it down, that is again uh, where the floor was. So I have used the laser level here just to uh, work out roughly where I want the um, glass bulkheads to be cut down to to give me the appropriate height above it to put the new cabin sole down. Now I know this is hard to believe but I am not a professional filmmaker and you've probably worked that out but I just thought I'd point it out just in case it wasn't completely obvious and what that means is because I've been jumping in and out of here and I don't script anything um, I can't actually remember what I have recorded and what I haven't recorded about how far I have got on the floor. You can see I've got some bearers in here. So I'm going to give you a quick recap on what I have done. And uh, hopefully if I have filmed some stuff in the meantime, I think I have, I'll be able to pop that in and edit it in as I'm talking. So the floor here needs floor bearers. So that's what these pieces of wood are here. 
And the key thing about getting the floor bearers in is that they must be all level with each other. So um, I devised a way of doing that. Um, but what I also wanted to do was um, have them at roughly the same height as the original floor bearers. So the floor goes back in at roughly the same height as the original floor. So just out of shot down here, I kept one of the old floor bearers and right at the very, very front up there in the gap underneath the bulkhead, you can also see there's a bit of a floor bearer there where the um, floor went underneath that bulkhead a little bit. So what I did was I purchased two long lengths of this aluminium angle, um, which obviously holds itself reasonably square. Laid them down so that the forward and aft ends were sitting on the original floor bearers. And from that, I could then measure outwards, uh, having worked out roughly where I wanted the floor bearers to go. I could measure outwards to the hole, top and bottom, and then I could cut these um, wooden bearers roughly to the right size. Now, the wonderful thing about using something like epoxy is it is a gap filling kind of adhesive. So um, I uh, stuck them in with some thickened epoxy. I also screwed the floor bearers to the bottom of my aluminium angles. Um, you can see I've marked sort of one, two, three, four. These have been cut in half now, but I'll come on to that. Um, and so I could position them all, screwed holes in them, uh, and then I could lift the whole thing up, get everything coated with epoxy, and then lift the whole thing down. So one, two, three, four, five bearers all went down all together at the same time. So um, following that, there was a little bit of a gap um, underneath these bearers. So um, again, with thickened epoxy, I have filled that gap, although I've got a bit more of a fill to do, which I will um, come on to next. Um, you'll notice there's one slightly shorter bearer here. In fact, you won't have noticed because you can't see it. So down here, there is one short one. I've put a floor bearer in front of the tank access hole and one aft of where the um, hoses come off under that tape. Um, but I just felt as though that span was a little bit larger than I really wanted. So I saw no reason not to put an extra one in just here. And so um, I haven't put one on this side, on the port side, because the port side piece will largely be underneath a locker. There's going to be a, an access panel here in the floor, uh, a, a hatch in the floor, so that needs to be lifted up so that one couldn't go all the way across. So the next bit of the puzzle for me is to glass these in. So I've put some filling material in underneath these because you need to lay glass up against something and these also to some extent tie the two sides of the hull together. I mean, that's mostly done by this GRP sheet, but you know, adding extra structure in with these all kind of helps. So I'm going to next measure up, cut up some glass, and I'm going to lay up kind of probably four or five layers of glass, either on one side or on both sides of these um, uh, floor supports. And uh, I can't do it on both sides on all of them because I can't get very easily down the back here. And actually there isn't enough of a gap for it to be worthwhile. There's not a lot that I can bond to underneath there. So I'll go one side on that, both sides on that, both sides on that, probably both sides on that, but there'll be more glass on the forward edge than there will be on the aft edge, just because of the amount of space I've got available. And uh, I've just realized that's out of shot. I'll, um, so, lay up glass on that side, but probably less so on that side. I'm going to put a small bit on this just to help support it, but obviously that's not going to the other side, so it's not tying the two sides of the hole together. And on this one, I'll only lay up glass on this side because on this side there isn't really a lot of space. I might be able to put, get some glass in, but um, I've got all the hose connectors right up, almost hard against that, so um, I'm limited in how much glass I can put in there. So. Um, to get this one in level, I put this one in here after I put all the others in. And I did exactly the same trick with my bits of aluminium. I had two 
aluminium bars. You might be able to see there's two small holes in there. And I screwed this in there, this in there, and then I was able to chuck an extra couple of screws in there. And that just held that in place while it all set. And obviously everything now is completely, totally flush, which I'm really happy with. So um, I'm going to go and cut up some glass, having done a quick measure to work out what I want. Uh, and then I'm going to mix up some thickened epoxy. I'm going to make a radius in here so I can then lay the glass up around that radius so it's going to come down and then along the tank top here. And uh, then once that's all done, I am into templating for the floor. I do get asked fairly regularly what materials I use for different elements of the project. And um, these are Douglas fir, these floor bearers. And uh, that is perfectly acceptable in my view for the purpose that they're being put to. The original ones that I took out were dug fir and um, they were nearly 50 years old and still perfectly usable. They hadn't rotted in any way, shape or form. And um, so uh, that is what is being put back in. It's a readily available wood. It's reasonably rot resistant. It's not going to be constantly wet where it is. And to be honest with you, it's largely going to be covered in epoxy or some other resin. Um, no, it is going to be epoxy. Uh, and then it will get flow coated after that as well. So, um, so it's going to be very well sealed. It's covered with peel ply now, but you can see what I've done with the laminating on that first number one floor bearer. It's taken three layers of combi mat in there. Unfortunately, I'm having to put each layer of combi mat in on its own just to get it to take the shape kind of in the corners at both ends. Because I think if I put two or three layers in in one go, which is what I'd normally do, um, I'm going to struggle to get it to, to roll out and, and kind of adhere to the surface evenly. So I would normally, you know, this is my rolling working place, I would normally kind of roll two, three layers of glass up and then transfer the whole thing over and stick it on where I want it to go. But I just can't do that um, with the curvature that's in there. So I'm about to do the second uh, bit of laminating. So if I turn it around, you can see I've put a little uh, fillet of uh, epoxy filler around there and then I can lay my glass up on that. For the sake of completeness, here's the laminating I've done. So that's three layers of combi mat that have gone in there prior to putting peel ply on. It's uh, all part of tying the two sides of the hull together. It also supports the floor bearers as well. So the more structure that goes in here, the better, because it just helps support everything that's going on at the top of the keel when the boat is sailing. I have just removed the peel ply from over the top of the floor bearers so this is all the glass I laid up a couple of days ago now because it's Monday morning and uh, the next job for me is to come in with my oscillating tool and trim all this glass back because I laid up the glass so that it would come up above um, the floor bearer uh, the top height of that and I'm going to now trim all that back down so I then have a finished set of floor bearers that I can put a floor in. So um, before I can start measuring up and templating for the floor that's going to go on top of those, I actually need to think about the steps at each end because there's going to be a step in here, if you recall, that's going to come up to kind of this height here. Uh, so I need to do some measuring. I'll have to get my laser um, level out to work out where that's going to be and then I'm going to put in the front of the step here. Now that front of the step is actually to some extent also a structural member of the boat because um, anything that I put in here is going to help with flex within um, the top of the keel area so um, that's going to get bonded in I think in this gap here you can see I've left a little a little gap there so I should be able to get a piece of 15 mil plywood to come in here. It isn't going to go all the way down into the bilge it's just going to go part of the way down um, and it will get bonded in both sides and uh, that will be the front of the step which the floor will butt up against. 
It's the same at the back here. I need to think about what's happening with the step. I think at the back, the step is going to sit on top of the floor. So uh, it's less critical back there in terms of working out what is going to go where, but certainly up at the front here, I need to make sure that is fully planned before I start cutting up and uh, templating the floor. In the last video, I think I showed you the uh, bearers that have been glassed in, but I needed to do some trimming on that because there was excess glass over the top. So that's all been cut flush and I've come back in and sanded it as well. So it's all kind of nice and smooth. And as we know, these are all level. So I'm pretty close to being able to put the floor in, but before I could put the floor in, the next step was to put the front of the step in, which is now, which is now in place if I don't wreck the boat, knocking everything over. So um, getting this cut to size was a little bit of a um, tricky process, but um, I do it with uh, a procedure um, which uh, uses one of these little things. So this is called, uh, I call it a joggle stick. I'm sure other people call it different things. I'll give you a close up. And it's just kind of a stick with a pointy end and random cuts in it. And uh, what I do is I cut a piece of wood, scrap wood, plywood, cheap wood, um, and put it roughly where it needs to go. And then I work around the edge of the uh, piece of wood and I get the pointy end against the hull and I draw around the stick and I move it and I move it and I move it. And uh, I've got two different joggle sticks. I've got a small one and a slightly bigger one. And uh, by doing that, and I've done the same on the other side here, and I've gone all the way around it, and then that allows me to cut a template like this. So that's kind of like stage one. Stage two is I transfer all of those markings over onto another scrap piece of plywood, which gets me much, much closer to the shape I want. Uh, and then I kind of put that in, then I finesse it as required, and end up finally transferring the shape of that when it's really, really close onto the decent plywood, um, which then gets um, bonded in. So I have just bogged this in to start with, with thickened epoxy, and it's got a bit of a radius there, and it's got a radius on the other side. Here, I've just chucked in some screws, so that is kind of holding it in place. To be honest with you, those screws are kind of superfluous now that it's gone off, um, but I'm gonna leave them in there because there's no reason necessarily to remove them. And um, what I'm going to do on this side, which is going to be out of shot, is I'm going to lay up some glass between the plywood and the hull. So again, this is adding extra structure into the kind of top of the keel area. So it will be bonded in here, and it's also going to be bonded in here into the side of the locker here, when the side of the locker here, as you may recall from an earlier video, is also bonded into the hull. So the whole thing is adding structure into the boat. Now that's been done. Um, I can start thinking about the floor. So I'm going to go through exactly the same process. Um, I've kept the old floor and I've cut a section out of it up here so that it can go down. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go around with my joggle stick again because this is ever so slightly higher than the old floor. So I'm gonna end up having to make my um, floor that goes down slightly bigger than the old floor. And so um, I will record me going around with my joggle stick, taking off all my measurements. And then again, I can transfer that over onto the good plywood, which I can cut and fit, cut some holes in it for the hatches and um, uh, away I go. see here, and I apologise for my very croaky voice, is the new cabin sole. I've uh, cut that out using the templating that you saw, and then I've beveled the edges. So these edges here will butt up against the side of the hull, 
and uh, I'm just about to take it upstairs and give it a trial fit. I'm expecting it'll need a bit more of a tickle to make it fit. Um, but once it's up there, I can mark on it where the uh, bearers are going to be because I'm going to need to drill holes for, for screwing it down onto those bearers. But I'm also going to want to mark on there where I need to cut the two bilge access hatches. So uh, that's what's going to happen next. Uh, once I'm happy with the fit of the floor and I've cut the build access hatches, I'm going to have to build a frame around those hatches so that the, uh, the hatches have got something to sit on. Uh, and then um, I'm going to prep the area underneath the floor uh, and then flow coat it all so it's all nice and clean and white. And uh, most of it won't get seen, but some of it will when you open the hatches. So um, that will just uh, finish it off beautifully. Well, there we go. For a first pass, that is actually closer than I expected it to be. I have got to do a little bit of a trim in a couple of areas. I'm going to mark on the top here where it's touching and I will remove some material from those because it's not quite completely sitting down on the bearers, but I am pretty happy with how that is all kind of fitting. So um, it's not going to take too much of a tickle to get that absolutely perfect. So uh, that's quite a result. It's taken a little bit of fiddle faddling to get this down so it fits really nicely, but the floor is pretty much done now. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that fits flushly around the sides and also sitting down on all the bearers. As you can see, I've cut the um, access hatches for getting into the bilge and getting to the top of the water tank. So I'm gonna go and knit around the workshop and uh, I've gotta make a frame to go around here, obviously to support from underneath the hatches. So I'm just gonna um, go around my workshop and use my table saw just to quickly rip up some lengths of slightly thinner plywood, which I'm gonna attach to the back to make that frame and uh, and then the floor is virtually ready to go down. Um, it's just gonna be cleaning up underneath and uh, taking it from there. This um, area here, in case you're wondering, is for hoses to go through. So all the hose connections go onto the tank here and they go up kind of into the locker that will be reattached in there. It's Saturday morning, I'm back in the tent. As you can hear, my voice is still a little bit croaky, but I can talk now, which is a big bonus because I spent a couple of days where I was kind of having to use hand signals and um, I couldn't talk very much, which was slightly annoying because the owner of Lottie has been down helping me um, for the last few days doing a few bits and pieces, which has been really, really nice. Behind me, you can see the framing around the holes for the hatches in the floor so that is all done and the entire surface of the underneath of the plywood has also had a coat of epoxy resin because why not it's good plywood that i have used it's really good quality robin's elite plywood and um, i really like it i've used it for lots of different projects it comes with a 15 year guarantee i think something like that um but as this is down in the bilge I see no reason not to give it a little additional protection and just give it a quick coat of epoxy as well just to make sure it's completely sealed from underneath. I've also been working on a few other projects on the boat so things like removing all the U-bolts on the deck so that all the holes can be um, sealed up and re-drilled because the whole spacing for the new U-bolts is slightly different to the old U-bolts and I've been working on the step inside which is around where the mast is. I'll show you that now. So back up inside the boat, you can see here, this is the step or the base, certainly for the step. And uh, whilst there's only a small hole there, that will be enlarged to go around the mast. These two boards lift out. They allow access to where the mast step is. So I've got a little bit of work left to do this. I just wanted to finish off the shaping of it yesterday. So um, the top of that is all happy and good. I need to put some framing in around those lift out boards just to stop them from falling through. And I'm gonna put some additional support in underneath there. I've got a bit of glass work to do as well. So that will continue today. The owner has been very busy 
sanding inside all of the lockers, which is great because it saves me from having to do it. So um, I think he's back in a little while to carry on doing his sanding. And I'm more than happy to work alongside owners that are prepared to do jobs, which I don't particularly enjoy. So um, that's all good. I don't think anyone enjoys sanding. Um, but I'm going to start thinking about the floor bearers for the step here. So I'm going to probably put the new floor down, but not, you know, fix it in place and start looking at the floor bearers and uh, seeing where they want to be because I'm going to be putting all new ones in to replace those which absolutely stink. They've had um, diesel and bilgy water and what have you soaking into them for the last 50 years and uh, they're pretty nasty. So we're going to stick some new ones in. Here's the underside of that step I just showed you. I pulled it out of the boat because it needs that framework around it for the hatch boards to sit in. Um, one of the other things I wanted to overcome was there was a very small amount of flex in this when you stood on it. And I was toying with the idea of putting an extra support into the framework underneath that's tied into the boat. But I'm going to be slightly lazy and have a dual purpose frame. And effectively, I'm going to extend that framework using the same 15 mil ply all the way out. So I'm cutting out a section that looks kind of like this. So it's way, way bigger than it needs to be. And it's extending out across the step and it will just stop that small amount of flex. And uh, it's just going to be a simpler way for me to solve that slight flex problem in the floorboard because we don't want flexy floorboards. That's the framing cut out. You can see there from the kind of top view. And if I turn that over, you'll see how far it extends underneath. There we go, I'll flip that over now. So uh, it's all loose at the moment, but you can see what I've done there. And uh, I've extended the plywood out a long way over to here, which is where your foot's gonna land as you step through the door either way. So that will reduce or pretty much eliminate any flexi in that uh, step as you go through it. So I'm just laying up the um, some of the glass that's gonna go in here. So there's gonna be a piece of glass that kind of ties this bulkhead in to the uh, to the whole side here and there's another piece that's going to go in there so just wetted out the first two pieces of glass I'm using my favorite combi mat again all right so I'll chuck the glass in and uh, just kind of loosely get it in place in there like my hands just to get rid of the go off and then I'll come back in with my thin roller I always try and minimize the amount of goo that gets on the handle so the lights not very good so hopefully the camera can see this I'm just working out any air bubbles that are in there push it right into the corner I've got a little radius in there that I made I made earlier in the Blue Peter fashion when I stuck it in as a little radius of um, epoxy filler there so the glass can roll around the radius quite happily. There we go, that's the first two. There's two layers in, looks okay to me. Now I need to mix up some more, move it up a bit. There we go, so mix up some more resin. Now I can stick the next two layers in. The next two layers are going to be slightly shorter, so it's going to be like a a feathered edge if you like there so it isn't all just going to suddenly stop there and there there'll be a layer that stops there and a layer that kind of stops there as well with the underfloor kind of all done and the step all done my attention is now on the step at the back and i'm just doing kind of what i did before with some bits of aluminium angle just to give me a level and uh, i can work out where the floor bearers roughly should be what's interesting is having got the boat level is uh i've just chest tested it all with a, a spirit level um and i can see where the old floor was the old floor bearers weren't all exactly in line with each other anyway so i'm going to try and get them a bit closer than where the old ones were so i've got two in place they're still bonded in which are going to get removed because they absolutely stink but um, I'm using them for the moment just to work out where everything needs to be and then I can have a measure. I can then chop the uh, wood up that I'm going to be using for that. It's Douglas fir again and uh, then I can put the new ones in. So I shall probably leave the one right at the back there in. I'm going to take that one out and then I'll 
glue a new one in there and a new one in there and then I can measure the front of the step here which will also support the top of the step uh, and make a template for that uh, and then start um, chucking it all in. It's been a few days since I did an update but here are the three new floor bearers that I've made. I've not made the front of the step which is going to go in kind of there uh, but I'm going to make that up once I've got these three in. In fact I'm going to put the first two in and then I'm going to take out those two and then I'll put the uh, number one one in right in front of the engine and then uh, using those three I've then got a straight level to come and make the front of the step here and make sure it's all at the, all the same level. But before I put all that in you'll see that the floor is all back up again and uh, what I'm going to do next is just to finish off kind of all this area here with flow coat. So in here I've just sanded back a few little high spots and bits and pieces. I've removed the old mast heel fitting that was on the mast step there. So I've left the holes because they will help me locate and work out exactly where the center point is for the new um, heel fitting when that arrives. So I'm gonna be using flow coat over this whole area here and then to the bilge which I've just been cleaning and uh, just making sure that's all kind of ready and prepped to go. I know it looks wet down there, there's just a little bit of shiny resin actually. I'm just gonna to have to sand that a little bit more just to give it a key. And uh, I'm gonna be using um, this stuff there. It's uh, top coat they're calling it. It's flow coat, which is basically the same as gel coat. It is just um, uh, polyester resin with pigment in it and with wax in it as well and what happens when that cures the wax comes to the surface and uh, it means that the finished resin or the gel coat is uh, not sticky to the touch it is the the final top coat that you would put on a repair for example. You can see here that I have used a bit of masking tape just around the edges of where I'm going to be flow coating the reason for that is I don't want to get any flow coat onto the edges where the floor is going to be touching because as well as gluing and screwing it down kind of on the bearers I'm actually going to put a bit of adhesive filler around the edges as well so the sides of the floor where they touch the hull will be uniformly kind of filled so um, I want that being uh, so I want that glued directly onto the hull not on top of the flow coat. If you'll excuse my legs being in the shop, here is the bilge and top of the tank and the mast step area all flow coated. So all looking lovely and clean and white. So I'm gonna go and leave the boat now and let that cure over the next few hours and I'll come back tomorrow. It's now the next day, so all this flow coat has gone off, so I can stand on it, which is good. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do for a few hours today is I'll probably put the uh, top finally on that step there. But more crucially is I want to put in the first of the new floor bearers in there. And now to do that, I need to set up all my levels again to get everything straight, which requires me to put, temporarily at least, the floor back down here. Here are the two floor bearers I'm just about to stick down so they are going down there you can just about see the four little pen marks I've made on the floor. The end grain because it will soak up a degree of the epoxy has been coated with unthickened epoxy so um, that will soak in to some extent and then the aluminium rails just help me locate it exactly where I want it. So the back of those rails will sit on top of that back bearer there, which is one of the original ones. So looking in the other direction, the rails will sit at the back on that tin of paint there with a block of wood on it, which just brings it up to the right height. And kind of over here, you can see one of the original floor supports there. So I'm gonna be putting them back in exactly where they used to be. There are the floor bearers in, bogged down on thickened epoxy. Each uh, meeting face has got a radius on it as well so that I can lay some glass up on there 
once this is all cured. Originally, these were not glassed in, they were just bogged in and they had all partially or completely detached from the hull over the last 50 years. So I'm gonna be glassing them in just to get a bit of additional strength in there. Hopefully they will stay attached this time. Obviously I've still got the one at the back up there to put in. I'll be putting that in in exactly the same way. And down the front here, I've got to make the front face of the step, which I'll be able to measure and template fairly accurately uh, when I next come onto the boat. But I don't want to disturb anything now in case I um, kind of mess up the levels because I know this is absolutely exactly where I want it at the moment. So uh, I'm going to leave the boat now so that I don't accidentally kick anything and come back in a couple of days. Managed to push on a little bit more today with the step that is in front of the engine bay. We've got the main hatch just up there. So you step down onto the top of the engine case and then there's normally a set of steps there which bring you down onto this area here between the chart table, which is there, and the galley, which doesn't look much like a galley at the moment, over there. So um, got the aftmost floor bearer bogged in, so all those three floor bearers will get glassed in probably tomorrow. Uh, I then templated the front of the step there, so I've got some cheap plywood in the shed. So I uh, made an initial template, which was very, very rough, and then made a much, much better one and then transferred that over onto some nice plywood. So the same stuff that uh, is on the uh, floor down there. So um, getting there, I've got to put a little bit of a kind of a, a step front in here as well, just because of the uh, shape of it. So that's been measured up, but I'm not gonna cut that now and fit it until tomorrow. So uh, I will continue in the morning. I'm pretty keen to get this floor glued and screwed down into position so it doesn't come up again. But the one last job I have got to do is sort out the fixings for this slightly crusty old table leg. Now this is going to get painted or I might even go off and get it powder coated because I think that might give a, uh, a nicer finish. Um, it looks a bit grotty, but it's actually pretty sound. Um, it's just old. So this is fitted with four fixing holes here uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just bring the camera down and show you how it looks. So on the floor you can see it's kind of angled like that so um, it has two fixings that go through the cabin sole and it has two that go out through the hull to the outside. Now the ones that go through the hull to the outside I can sort out uh, easily once all the flooring is done um, but the two through here need to fix into something. So my plan for the two fixings that go through the cabin sole is to attach a piece of aluminium bar. And I've just had this chopped off uh, a uh, spare bit of bar that a friend had, and uh, I'm going to be able to attach this to the bottom of the floor using some thickened epoxy. I'm going to rough this up with some 40 grit paper or something like that, a couple of screws just to hold it in place while it all bonds. And then from above later, I can drill down, tap some holes into these and then screw in my fixings um, when it comes to it. So um, that's how I'm going to do it. The reason I've got a fairly wide, thick bit of bar is I'm not entirely sure yet exactly where this table leg has got to go. So I can roughly get it in position. The, the idea is that this table leg is positioned so that you can drop the table down. The table fits into the the hole here in the furniture. So I'm going to slot the table into the uh, mount in a minute and roughly position it in the right place. I'm then going to drill two very small holes through the floor so that I can see where this bar needs to be from the other side. I shall then position this bar and attach it, but I will attach it so that it is probably here because um, I've obviously got to put some um, wood on the side here and that is going to bring the table leg out a bit but it'll only bring it out that way it won't move it forward and aft so um, as long as I've got a degree of movement there this piece of bar is big enough that when I drill the hole it doesn't really matter if it's there there or there as long as it's through the bar so um, that's the plan so I'm going to go and get to it the other thing I'm going to do before I lift the floor up is I'm going to drill all the fixing holes because I've marked on here I don't know if you can see it, um, but I've drawn lines on 
where the floor bearers are so I can pre-drill all of the screw fixing holes. With the floor up, you can see I have marked and then given the epoxy that's on the underneath of here a bit of a scuff up with some 80 grit. I've drilled some fixing holes in the aluminium bar and again you can see I've given that a good scuff up with some sandpaper as well. So hopefully by uh, putting some uh, slightly thickened epoxy on there and then holding it in place on there with the screws that will bond nicely. One of the bits you don't normally get to see me doing on a project like this, but it's actually quite time consuming. It does take up a reasonable amount of my uh, time is working out the um, materials that I need. And um, that does take a bit of thought at times. So one of the things we're going to be doing on this floor, the plan at the moment is to lay teak and holly, solid teak and holly on top of the floor. Now we're not actually going to be using teak teak and we're not actually going to be using holly because you can't get hold of it in this country um, but we're going to have teak and holly affect solid wood on the floor here because it really looks absolutely lovely when it's done so um, but to do that I need to get off to my supplier a cutting list for the material so I took a diagram um, draw, drew a really scrappy diagram um, when I was on the boat previously with some very rough dimensions so I sat down with my morning cup of tea and had to work out the surface area that I've got to cover. cover. Um, and uh, I'm going to be using 50 mil planks and uh, what did I say, eight mil infills of holly in between those teak planks. So um, that should give a really nice effect on the hull. Um, but it all takes time. You know, I sit down, I've got my kind of workbook that I have to sit here and um, you know work out how many millimeters of um, material I need to get the surface area done both through here and up in the heads as well. Here you can see I've just put a little kind of smear of thickened epoxy just around that edge where the wood is gonna butt up against the hull so um, that will mostly squeeze out because it's a pretty close fit all the way around so I'm going to drop the floor down then it can be screwed down and uh, I'm not going to be taking it up again. And there we go the floor is down and it is not coming back up again I've just used three screws through each of the floor bearers to hold it in place. I can't remember how many the old floor have but that should be plenty and because I had enough goo left over I've also just put an initial bond in on the um, step front in there as well. So um, that is glued and screwed in place as well. So I'm probably going to stop for lunch soon, but after lunch it is going to be templating time because I've got to make a template for the step top, which is going to be going in there and then work out also where the hatch is going to be in that so that it can access the new seacock which is going to be going kind of just in there in between the floor bearers so that is the next bit of the 3d puzzle with the floor down i've just very roughly cut out a template for the top of that step and the next thing i'm going to do is finesse that and i'm going to be doing that as i did before with my joggle stick this uh, this thing here so it's basically just a stick with notches in and i move this around all the edges where i know it needs to be so right into the corners and i can take that radius and what have you and i'll work all the way around the um top there and uh, i'll then be able to transfer that onto another piece of wood and that gets me really really close to the shape i need so what i will also need to do is i'll measure out across to the hull here but then on the opposite side i'm going to have to remove material from the plywood again as i did for the main part of the floor just to get that to sit down flush the other thing i've got to do is work out where the floor bearers are i know there's one roughly kind of there one roughly kind of there and uh work out where those floor bars are and draw on where I want to have a access hatch for the seacock that's going in underneath there.
been around with my joggle stick and taken off all the positions that I want around the edge. Not too worried about the back under the front of the engine, but you can see I've worked my way all the way around and back to the bulkhead at the aft end of the galley. So I can now remove that. I've got one screw in just to kind of locate it so it doesn't move whilst I'm doing all of that. And uh, I can now take that off and transfer it over to another piece of plywood. I might go straight to the decent ply because it's not a million, million miles out. So, uh, and as it's not gonna get seen, I just need to get it close enough to look decent and uh, give me a solid base for putting the finished teak on top. I've spent the last hour fiddle faddling with this top for the step here and it's really quite close now to fitting properly. It's just, I'm going around and it's just slightly high. It's touching on the corner here. You can see the hull comes up in that corner. So I'm gonna trim that back a bit. And I'm kind of just moving around. You can see it moves there cause it's not quite down. I'm gonna to have to remove a little bit of material from the behind here cause the, the hull isn't completely flat there. There's an extra bit of um, bonding or material in there. So I'm gonna grind that back underneath. Uh, everything else seems to be sitting down pretty flush. Here's an example of why you check and double check everything. I had assumed, incorrectly, that the steps that go in front of the engine bay would be central and they are ever so slightly off centre. So my central hatch is going to look a little bit funny. So I'm moving it kind of left about 20 mil. So uh, I'm going to bring this line in here a little bit. I'm going to bring that line over to there just so that visually when you look at it, it won't look off center because the steps don't look off center even though they are ever so slightly. Just finished glassing in those floor bearers. That's it pretty much done under there. The only thing I have left to do is I'll probably fit the seacock uh, that's gonna go kind of just down there. Um, for the engine, I'll do that probably before the lid goes on, just because it's going to be slightly easier. And then I'll flow coat the whole area as well. The glass at the front is a slightly different colour because I ran out of my normal combi mat and I had to use some slightly coarser, heavier combi mat in the front there, which is no great issue. It's just going to probably be a little bit stronger and uh, it absorbs a bit more resin when I put it on. And uh, I have some more glass turning up tomorrow, hopefully. There's the lid, that's the top of the step. So I've just given that a coat of neat epoxy resin as well, just to completely seal it before it all goes down. It's now the next day and this has done its uh, initial cure. So I'm using epoxy. So um, the temperatures at the moment are acceptable for using epoxy but it's not curing super quickly and also because I want to flow coat over all this area um, you can flow coat over epoxy but it absolutely must be completely 100% cured otherwise you can get some problems but in the meantime I've drilled a hole through the bottom of the boat you'll recall that I'm moving the um, seacock for the engine which was under there which is a stupid location to under here and it's going to be underneath a um, hatch in the floor as you come down the steps which is a much more sensible location. I'm going to be fitting uh, composite seacocks for this application so this is a true design through hole and here is uh, the true design uh, seacock. I fitted loads of these and I found them to be really quite good. I've not had any issues with them. Might still be fitting Blake's in other parts of the boat, but there's a good reason for putting a plastic seacock in here. Historically speaking, most contestors came with Blake's seacocks, which are uh, metal. Um, they used to be bronze, they're now DZR if you buy new ones, so that means it's corrosion resistant brass rather than bronze. Um, and they generally last extremely well. They do last a very, very long time. They're good um, fittings. But the one and only time I have seen galvanic corrosion on a Blake's Seacock, and it was a newer corrosion resistant Blake's Seacocks, was the engine inlet. Uh, and on that particular boat, which was a Contessa, funnily enough, um, it had copper coat. It had um, obviously uh, a normal diesel engine 
um, which was bonded to a anode on the hull. Um, but there was also potentially, I think, an electrical path between the engine and the DZR Blake's Seacock, which was down um, where I'm fitting one here. And it's for that reason, and that reason only, that I'm fitting a composite Seacock for the engine, because this boat is probably gonna get copper coated. Um, and of all the Seacocks, the only one that is attached to a big lump of metal is the engine one so I think there is something to be said for using a composite seacock on the engine seacock um, if you can't get hold of a bronze seacock which are far more rot resistant even than corrosion resistant or DZR seacocks so um, so that is why I am doing it now on the inside of the boat the hull is not absolutely completely 100% flat so I've cut a little disc of um, leftover glass fiber sheet that I have. This is the same stuff that I used for making some bulkheads in the keel area and going over the top of the keel, if you recall. Um, so I'm going to bond this in on the inside of the hull and then the seacock, the whole thing will do up on it and then it will have a nice flat surface for the kind of the nut to do up against. So um, it just seems like a uh, nice way to do it. Um, the other thing was that was interesting is I was looking through my hull source to cut a hole in the hull for the seacock and uh, the standard size is a 25 mil, which is one inch, um, and 28 or 29 mil. And the 29 mil was just um, too sloppy and the 25 was too tight. So um, it's very tempting to put the slightly bigger one through, but it just was a really, really kind of loose fit in the hole um, when I put a hole in a piece of scrap plywood. So I've gone for the 25 and then I used my Dremel, which is just out of reach, which isn't a Dremel. I use Dremel as the term for a rotary tool so um i have a bosch rotary tool and i just very quickly it took about three minutes just to open up that 25 up to about 27 mil or something like that and um, then that is a nice snug fit for my skin fitting to go through and here's that seacock in place now and you can see it sits just below the top of the floor bearers so the little hatch will be openable just at the bottom of the steps there and uh, we'll be able to switch the engine seacock on and off very easily. I just finished this off here with just a kind of a little fillet just to make it um, make it look nice. That whole area now needs a sand just to give it a really good key so I can put some flow coat on it. I've just popped the step top on there so you can see how it looks. That little hatch will sit quite nicely between the two legs of the steps which the crew will use to climb out the main hatch. With the floor very much kind of done, apart from obviously it's gonna have its covering over the top, but structurally it's done. The next thing I want to do is refit this last piece of furniture. So if you saw the earlier videos when I was ripping everything out, I removed part of the internal furniture, which is just off camera there, and an identical piece here because these sat on top of the floor. Now. Uh, that one got put back in, the one out of shot, uh, in an earlier video underneath the floor, effectively, because I wanted to bond it into the hull. This one, however, is kind of less structural, less important. Um, so it's going to go back in on top of the floor. But because the floor is ever so slightly higher, it doesn't quite go back in if I sit it on top of this floor. So I'm just going to do some fairly careful measuring uh, around the bottom. So I'll just bring you down here. I've just put some masking tape on here. So I'm going to do a bit of careful measuring of what height it needs to be. I can then trim this back uh, and then the whole thing will get glued back in, screwed back in and ultimately glassed back in as well. So you can see in the locker here, that's the old tabbing, which I'm yet to remove off the inside of the furniture. That will get ground back and then the whole thing can get glassed back in. Same deal that side, although that's the bottom of the bulkhead that has had a fillet of thickened epoxy in it just because the bulkhead was flapping around all over the place when I um, removed the glass that was there. Uh, and likewise, that'll all get kind of glued and screwed in place with a bit of glass as well. At some point, I've got to decide how to fix that hole. Um, there was an old heater system here and that was a very large outlet for it. Uh, and I'm gonna have to do something with that. And it's gonna be quite tricky to get the wood to to match but I'm going to see what sort of veneer I can get that is a close-ish colour match to this quite dark wood. I think 
it's something very similar to Sapili, this wood. When you strip it back, it is a kind of a slightly reddy coloured wood. It's not teak, at least I'm fairly confident it's not teak on this particular era of Contessa. There we go, with a little bit of trimming, mostly on the bottom there. Managed to get that to fit quite nicely back in where it's got to go. So I'm now going to have to suit up and I'm going to take the angle grinder to the inside, remove all that old tabbing, get rid of all that old paint and uh, get it ready to go back in. I think it's been about three days since I did the bonding work on these floor bearers just under the step here. So I've just given it all a bit of a sand to give that epoxy a good key for the flow coat to stick onto. And I've just masked up as well all the bits that I don't want to get flow coat on. Now, just to reiterate, you wouldn't normally necessarily use polyester flow coat over epoxy. You can do it. The surface needs to be really, really well prepped and the epoxy needs to be completely cured because you're not going to get a chemical bond between polyester and epoxy. But it does give a really nice hard wearing finish. So that is why I'm doing it. So I'm going to go suit up and uh, mix up some polyester, catalyze it and chuck it on the hull. that area now all flow coated all finished so the lid is basically ready to go on that now and we can call that step done the only little job I've got to do is in here I haven't quite finished it because I want to drill a hole through the floor down there that's going to be kind of a closed off compartment and just in case any water gets in there I want it to be able to drain so I'm going to chuck a hole in the bottom of that once the flow coat has all cured and then the lid of that step will go on with the floor basically done, I've just got to put the lid down on top of that once the flow coat is cured. I am going to bring this video to an end. I've got way, way too much content again to make a reasonable length video. So this is going to be a bit of a marathon, I think. So if you've reached it to the end, very well done. If you like this content, give me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you got this far, then uh, I really appreciate it when people do do that. It helps me grow the channel and it means you get to see all my future videos. So. Thank you very much for watching. In the next episode, I've got to take that engine out. So um, that's what I'm going to start doing tomorrow. I'll be waiting to finish off this step here so that I've got something to lift the engine out onto. Uh, and that's so that I can refurbish the engine bay. But more importantly, I want to be able to get into the back of the engine bay to access the top of the skeg. So uh, for more exciting Contessa stuff, stay tuned and I'll see you next time.